Welcome back to part five of our Restoring a Rare Bird, brought to you by SkiBoatPartsOnline.com. My name is Ron, and today we're going to take a look at the floors and the stringers. When this boat first came in, we did a core sample of the floors, and we already know that the flotation foam is very wet and needs to be removed. We also learned right away that the swim platform brackets in the transom uh, those backing boards were rotten, which is uh, not uncommon. So to repair that and get access to the foam, we're going to cut a section of the rear floor out. You can see that where the red lines, those are the cut lines, where we're going to cut the, the floor section out. My tool of choice for cutting these floors out is going to be a reciprocating saw or sawzall using an 8-inch uh, construction demolition type blade. Uh, you're only cutting through a 24 ounce woven roving uh, tape along the side there. It's not that thick, so it's going to cut pretty easy. And this saw makes uh, very little dust. When you're cutting across the floor and across where the stringers are, uh, you'll plunge the blade into the floor cavity cutting into the foam. But when you hit the stringer area, you want to float your blade over the top of the stringers. You don't want to cut the stringers. It's kind of a feel uh, that you'll, you'll learn but uh, you, you really don't want to cut the top of the stringers. Making sure all of the uh, screws have been removed in this floor section, you can take the saw and then cut across the top of the stringer below the floor in between the two, splitting it apart. In this case, uh, it went quite easily. There wasn't much holding it together there. Okay, we've got the floor uh, section cut out, pried off. Um, we got yet to remove the well area, that fiberglass well where the pry bar is located now. Uh, we'll cut that loose and pry it out of there. Um, next we removed the foam flotation foam that you see. It was quite waterlogged. Um, after we removed that foam, uh, made the decision that we're going to remove the rest of the floor between this point and an area across from the ski pylon. So we're going to cut that loose next. Another telltale sign that these floors are loose uh, uh, and in trouble is where it's circled. You can see where the port side floor has lifted away from the stringers. That's actually about a half inch gap uh, between the floor and the stringer. If you step on it, it'll actually move. Both sides were the same way. So uh, again, this is why we're going to pull these floors out. Well, it's early March and I've already got a nice tan on the top of my head. Uh, here I am marking where I'm going to cut the floors. Uh, I'm going to do this both on the port and the starboard side. Cutting along the uh, hull sides will go pretty fast. It uh, doesn't take long to cut through here. Make sure all the screws have been removed that are uh, attaching the floor uh, to the stringer system. Again, when cutting across the floor, make sure you float the blade over the top of the stringer so you're not cutting the stringers. Uh, when locating the screws holding the floor down, you may want to snap a chalk line uh, so that you know exactly where that stringer is. Okay. Once the cuts have all been made and the screws have been removed, uh, grab a hold of that floor and try to lift it up. Uh, in this case, we're going to get very lucky. This is why we removed the floor. It didn't feel like it was secured properly and it lifted right up. Well, my suspicions were confirmed. Uh, this floor was not properly bonded anymore to the stringers. Uh, you see the flotation foam on the underside of the floor. That's the only thing that was really holding it down. Uh, there were only four screws that had any biting power left. The rest of them were stripped out. Now we're getting somewhere. Port and starboard floors have been removed. The soggy wet flotation foam has all been taken out. The floors have been cleaned and vacuumed. Uh, the stringers have been checked and inspected. They're all nice and solid. Uh, we are going to not only tighten the motor mount bolts, but we're going to actually add an additional stainless fender washer to the inside of the stringers uh, just to give it a little more, uh, another 40 years worth of life, I guess. The early advanced models with the composite floors are notorious for sagging in the forward center section. Uh, the 26 inch span between the uh, main stringers is a little too much for this uh, floor thickness. Uh, you'll see we got about an inch gap uh, right there, so this needs to be addressed. Now normally I would uh, section out the center section only uh, to resolve this sagging issue, 
but because we've got such wet foam on both sides uh, I decided I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, the entire four floor out uh, from about the dash aft uh, we're just going to cut this out and pull it out let me mention that before I cut away that midsection floor that we're about to lift off I've reinstalled the port and starboard midsection floors back into the boat there's a couple ways you can um, put these in. You can use a, a resin, a filled resin slurry solution. Um, but in this case, uh, we chose to use 3M5200 caulk, uh, a heavy bead of caulk on top of the stringers before you set the uh, floors back in there. Uh, again, after the stringer tops have been ground clean and the bottom side of the floors have been ground clean with the grinder, um, that 3M caulk will bite just as tenacious as any resin will, if not better. I am glad we decided to remove the entire section of flooring here. Uh, once we cut it loose, it, uh, there was really nothing holding it down. There was very uh, poor adhesion anywhere, uh, and it popped right off. Okay, once that uh, floor section is removed, uh, we uncovered uh, some pretty serious issues here. Let me start on the left and right. The two small circled areas are flotation foam voids. These are areas where the foam uh, was not present. Uh, this boat had sunk uh, twice, I believe, in its lifetime. Um, it was obvious that these cavity areas had been filled with water. Um, it's also in an area where the stringers uh, have been compromised um, and these stringers uh, right in this area um, are quite deteriorated. Uh, the center section, uh, that foam block that's in there originally was held in place by a wooden box. Uh, what you see around the perimeter is the remaining fiberglass that uh, secured the wood box in place. The wood is all deteriorated and disappeared and gone. We found very little evidence of the plywood left. There were some small pieces, um, but by and large, it has just simply disintegrated and is gone. For those who are wondering, uh, why not just fill this cavity up with flotation foam from the bottom of the bilge all the way to underneath the floor to support it? Well, the answer is easy. Uh, the original box uh, maintained about a two inch, two and a half inch gap between the top of the box and the bottom of the floor. Uh, this is for the ventilation air to get from the front to the bilge area in the motor area. Um, that's a requirement. We have to have air getting back to that uh, engine compartment. It also allows the wiring to go above the box and below the floor and the steering cable uh, also fits through that uh, chase way. Now that we're going to be doing some serious uh, backbone surgery on this boat, uh, it's time to make sure that all of our support structure is in place and is uh, uh, right where they need to be. We've got uh, adjustable screw jacks along that keel uh, fore and aft of where the uh, stringer damage is. Now we've got all the flotation foam removed uh, from this section. The black dot in the middle there uh, is where we cut away the glass that was holding in the plywood box uh, to contain that foam. That uh, uh, the glass work there was less than perfect and this was the point of water intrusion into the stringers in this area. Here you okay. can see that the stringer on the port side is, is actually broken in half. The glass is broken when you apply weight on and off you can see the stringer moving. The same thing happens on the uh, starboard side. Uh, looks like I'm going to be working on Saturday to keep this project on track. Okay, well it's Saturday morning and I'm starting my day off with uh, eating some fiberglass dust, grinding and cutting. Uh, here I have cut away the rotten stringer up to the point where I'm getting sawdust when I'm cutting. That's the telltale sign. When you get sawdust you're into good, good wood. Um, but uh, most of this was rotten. Here's a view from the other side, uh, trying to retain some of the glass uh, along that motor mount there. I removed the motor mount bolts, obviously, to do this, but we're going to cut a section, a piece of stringer in here. 
Note that I'm going to do one stringer at a time. This is to help maintain the hull shape even though it's supported well below. Don't want to take any chances of movement. So here I've shaped and formed a replacement stringer section from high density foam board. Uh, this has been bonded into place with a, a thickened resin solution um, and clamped in place. Okay, after the blocks have cured in place, I uh, have wrapped these in glass. I've got 1708 uh, fab mat, two laminates on the inside, one on the outside, and a fourth laminate uh, draped over the top running down both of the sides. This will uh, lock that stringer in now. Okay, now we're going to repeat the process uh, over on the uh, starboard side. Uh, what came out of there was just as bad as the port side. Uh, pretty pretty wet nasty wood again we cut back until we get sawdust and we get good solid wood uh, that's the that's the goal here from both sides I've got about a half of a uh, five gallon bucket of uh, deteriorated wood that came out of there after the wood's been removed until you get to the good wood you've got to dry this up really well so I'll put a force dryer on it and hit that for a few hours you can see just how far back I had to go um, to get to good solid wood again. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and repeat uh, exactly what I did on the other side to complete this stringer. Well, the starboard side uh, stringer section ended up being a little bit longer. It's almost 30 inches long compared to about 20 inches on the other side. Um, I use the same laminate schedule. It's rock solid. Uh, we're good to go again. We're back on schedule. It's getting late on a Saturday night, uh, so it's time for me to go in for dinner. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, you learned something from it. Um, if you did, uh, subscribe to our channel. We've got um, several more uh, videos to come on this project. Thank you, and God bless.